everybody. Welcome to the Tech Joint Podcast. Now, I'm pretty excited about this podcast. I've been looking for it for a, while, uh, for a couple of weeks ever since he, he agreed to be in my podcast. Today, uh, we have somebody that uh, I primarily communicate with through on Twitter. He's real big on, on, on Twitter. A uh, pretty good name in our industry. I've been following him for four years. And yes, I am uh, geeking out a little bit here in front of him because for those of you that follow me for a while, some of my newsletters, posts, and LinkedIn posts that I make have been, he's, uh, what he produces has been uh, an anchor to me making some of that content or expanding upon it. So I do follow him very closely on Twitter. His name is Barry Swartz. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Barry, uh, introduce yourself, who you are, what you do. When, when, um... Barry Schwartz, I've been, at least in the search world, been writing about how search engines, now obviously primarily Google, um, work, how they change, what's new, what's what's old um, for the past 20 plus years now. I started writing about search in 2003 at Search Engine Roundtable. I own a web development and mobile application company uh, in New York called Rusty Brick. So we do a lot of software development. So we are a small business. Um, and I also am the news editor at Search Engine Land. I consider covering search and writing about search a hobby. Um, very passionate about it. Love the topic. And I love how much it's changing so quickly. So Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it, man. I'm geeking out a little bit because a lot of my inspiration for stuff I've written on or expanded upon uh, have been from your articles. Uh, so you post something on on Twitter, which is where primarily where I follow you, I, I, where, I, where I get my information from. I even from when it comes to Google, I'll read it and be like, oh, that's a good article. And then I'll expand upon it in my own version um, as well. So it's awesome to have you geeking out a little bit, like I said, guys. Um, a lot of people know who Barry is. When I, when you decided to be on my podcast, I hit up some of my buddies um, online, and they're like, "Yeah, we knew who Barry is." <laughs> so you're, you have a name. You, you got some authority behind you, man. <laughs> it's awesome. But one of the things I want, I want Barry to go over was uh, SEO. As whoever knows, I'm a PPC guy. SEO is needed. You need both. Just kind of depending on what industry you're in. Depends on how much effort you put one towards the other. But um, search engine optimization is one of the biggest things that a lot of businesses, I believe, well, I know for sure, know they need to do it, and they have no idea how to do it. But you can expand a little bit, like, what are some huge mistakes and myths that you see businesses complement when it comes to their on-site? I think the biggest myth is that it's like some type of, like, weird, like, underground magic, some black box. It's Google generally doesn't want you to have to think too hard about SEO. They want to rank the best stuff um, in the search results. Like if Google's not ranking content on the search in, in, the, in the whole entire web, um, then they have a problem to fix, not necessarily you. The SEO's job is really to say, hey, this website has really good content. Let's go make sure that it's pretty, very visible to Google. Meaning there's not, not something preventing Google from finding it, discovering it crawling it like a spider would and then indexing it and then ranking it. And that's the primary goal of most SEOs is to do that. SEOs also go ahead and make sure to give ideas on how to improve your content, um, how to get more traction to your content. Um, and basically how to like encourage Google to reward your content in Google search. So that's a lot of different things there. It's just a quick over high level overview of it. Um, but it's not some type of like weird thing that you sprinkle some stuff on and then it happens by itself. There's a rhyme and reason to it. And Google, again, if you write in great stuff, as long as Google could actually access that stuff, then hopefully the Google will write. And so I might, for, so for example, I know about the, the blogging. Uh, you would say blogging is pretty important when it comes to your on-site SEO. So yeah, so blogging is important because that gives you an opportunity to write content that Google could actually go ahead and crawl and index. And it gives you an opportunity to create not just, like on a website, let's say you have a small business, you might have like 10 web pages about us, a couple services that you offer, a couple products, and your contact us page. Um, what a blog allows you to do is create more cases of how you helped your customers. So let's say you sell, I don't know, tissue boxes, um, and you wanna go through all the use cases of how a tissue box with tissues in it could help you. So you might be like, all right, in one case, the tissue box we got from, gave it to our client, helped them with you know their cold. In another case, the tissue box helped them wipe up something that they spilled during a, a podcast, um, and they wanted to wipe it up without anybody noticing. Another, you know, they could come up with all these different scenarios of how your products and services could help people and case studies 
if somebody's searching for that use case, like, oh, I spilled my drink on my keyboard, how do I clean it up? You might have a solution for them. They might not be just searching for your tissue box, but they might be searching for the problem that the tissue box could solve. And that's a very weird example, but I think people understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's an amazing example. I actually didn't think about that because normally, so so I might need to adjust my, my, my blog. So, we, so in Pathfinder, we try to blog a minimum well, we do actually a minimum one blog every week, every Monday, we have a new blog that goes up and we kind of base it off of what searches happen. So we run our own ads at the PPC agency, no surprise there. And then, well, some of those searches aren't, like you mentioned, they're not service related. They're people asking questions. We'll, we'll take that topic and then next, the following week, we will write a blog on it. Um, how often should a business owner be presenting these these case studies or these solutions because my my understanding with this seo is a minimum of one blog per week um no there's no specific number to give i mean you could it depends on who you are how much time you have it's really hard for a small business owner especially like somebody who's out in the field doing the day-to-day -day job on a day-to-day -day basis to actually spend time and have time to actually go ahead and write stuff so for me i find it that if i have a routine i'm good at sticking to that routine for me, I write like, again, I'm covering search news, so it's different. I'm, I, I write probably somewhere between five and 10 blog posts a day, but I give myself about two hours, like from between like 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. or something like that in the morning to write that stuff. If you could put on your calendar to write once a week, that's great. But if you're not doing that, what I recommend is you keep like a Google Doc or something, like a, like a, like a checklist of stuff, ideas that come through your head. You're out in the field. The customer had this problem. Or you're talking to a customer on the phone, or you get an email from a customer or a prospect. Anything that you could glean from those conversations, put them on, on your idea list, and then you could go ahead and tackle them as you have time to write these blog posts. And maybe reserve like an hour a week or two hours a week, um, twice a week, whatever it might be, depending on your schedule, to cover those topics so you don't forget about them. Because often you'll, you'll and I do that myself, like I'll, I can't write constantly, but I go ahead and have a section where I keep track of what I want to write about. And when I get to it, I go ahead and, and prioritize those, those, those blog posts. So that's my best advice in terms of that. I don't wouldn't look at aim for a specific number. It really depends on your time. I would more allocate saying X hours per week reserved at this time or, you know, multiple times per week, whatever it might be. Um, and then tackle those topics as you get. And you know what? You have that right now. Tell all my clients, especially for some reason, they get embarrassed or they don't want to make content much. Uh, we try to get more of a, a video content because we try to run YouTube ads and remarketing, remarketing ads on bumper on YouTube as bumper ads or in ad reels. And it's so hard to get that. But then again, they're not writing their blogs. I tell clients to sit down or just think when, and this, this is something, a tactic I try to use with, with our clients when they've been in the industry for a while and they get a new client, they probably already know the top five, 10 questions they're going to get. Why, what, why won't these people write blogs or make video content about it? I mean, it's, to me, it's frustrating. I don't get it. Maybe because I've been doing it for nine years now. I'm just kind of just blogging and content creation is just part of the job now, like it is for you. <laughs> you're, just, you're, you're there, you're doing it. But um, do you have any advice or tricks that would be like, just help a business owner, like understand the importance of this and just like, just do it. Guys. So that's the one is that they have to put a part of their routine and they're so busy with their daily routine that disrupt that. And they've been doing that for 10, 15 years. Changing that is a big deal. People don't like change. Two is blogging usually takes a lot of time. It takes not, it takes time to see the reward, the ROI on it. It's not something like you put a blog post up today and tomorrow you get crazy traffic. It's very rare for that to happen. Usually it takes about a year or two to actually start to see traction from your blogging efforts. Um, so the reward is not immediate and that's the biggest concern. Um, but if you could convince a client to have a schedule, a routine to do that, it's also rewarding for them. I mean, you could also pitch it like if you do it enough, you might become an authority in the space. Like you said, people in your, you know, uh, on your channel know, some people know who I am. The reason is because I'm all over the place when it comes to Google search and I've been all over the place for 20 plus years. Now, it didn't happen overnight. It took many, many years for that to happen. And it's still effort. I, I put in the effort every single day. Um, I don't do it for the purpose of, getting my name out there. I do that for the purposes because I love the topic and I love writing about it. But that being said, it takes effort and you need to have a routine and that, that reward will be seen, but only after 
a significant amount of effort. And that if you give and you stop doing it also, it that that goes away fast too. So you got to keep it up. And the best my best advice again is to have a routine on your calendar. Do it once or twice a week at a certain time. And you hear it from someone else's business owners. You gotta put in the effort. Yeah. SEO, when you're doing this stuff, it's going to take two years. And I'm in that spot right now because we actually just started within the last year taking our on-site SEO seriously and blogging and consistently writing the blogs. And we're increasing, personally for our company, we're increasing our game on LinkedIn specifically just to increase our brand authority or mine specifically and the companies. PPC, sure, I can show proof of concept in about 30 days. Is this going to work or not? But if you want that sweet organic traffic, because I barely mentioned, you're going to have to put forth that effort. I mean, uh, in, my, in my world, when you come, and I'm, I'm trying to compare this to probably YouTube, does a blog go viral like a YouTube video? It could. Yeah, it definitely could. Um, it could go viral on many different avenues. Obviously, like the old-fashioned getting hit on social media, like Reddit or Hacker News or the old-fashioned Dig and stuff on. And also, it could, get, it could hit on Google Discover. In Google search where people are just browsing their Google homepage and it could be big right there. Um, there's lots of ways things could go viral and get a lot of traffic immediately um, or even a couple days after. Um, but that usually does take time. You got to build up the site. I, I built up a new website a couple years ago. I was obsessed with a, a new type of car and I said, like, oh, no, I'm going to blog about it and create a new blog. And enthusiast too. Not I, I, not really. I used to be. Um, not going to get into the brand or anything. I don't want to, you know, get there because whatever. But anyway, I, I covered it for about a year and a half, two years. But it, it, over the first two months, it was dead, nothingness. But after that, it, it, I had many viral things go go viral. I had much crazy traffic on some stories. Um, and it only took a few months, but it took a lot of writing. I, t I probably wrote it about at least twice a day, sometimes more um, on that blog. So yeah, I mean, as long as you put your heart into it, Ultimately, in the long run, it should pay off. Of course, there are many examples where sites get hit by Google algorithm updates, by Google, you know, search ranking changes that actually have a negative impact on the website. I've been, my sites have been hit numerous times over the years, obviously. Most publishers have been hit over the years. But ultimately, if you keep building out the content, Google will adjust their algorithm. Of course, a lot of people go bankrupt over the years because they can't do that with no traffic. But if you are running a, a, a current business and you're doing well, um, I would just make this a, you know, sleep an hour less, you know, <laughs> wake up a little bit earlier one day a week and just write about it. Um, and you'll see a payoff. You mentioned, so in both of our industries in, in PPC, SEO, there is always a lot of bad information. I got lucky when I started my company to just stumble upon some pretty good mentors that helped me build my company. And you said earlier, uh, the good uh, work. What are some of the bad things that you, that you see businesses do that you're just like, you got to not do this when it comes to your SEO or any form of SEO? Right. Honestly, if anything seems way too easy, I would just avoid it. Stay away from it. Like people are like, oh, you buy links. You put throw money at it. It's going to solve the problem. It's, it's, it used to be the case like 20 years ago, you could, ha you could basically manipulate Google very, very easily um, in a matter of minutes and rank very well. That's not the case anymore. If you find some loophole that happens to work, you could go ahead and get your website be uh, penalized for a long time. You have to put the work out there. Anything that's easy, I wouldn't do like white text, you know, any, any of the, like, I would read the Google webmaster guidelines, uh, Google search console, uh, Google search central documentation, read their documentation, apply by their guidelines. Don't go ahead and just like throw up fake AI generated. Yes, I know so much of the fake AI generated content out there. Yeah. I mean, there's ways to do it. Um, in a way that it's helpful for users. But again, I would not go for I mean, somebody promising you like great SEO. You get emails all the time. I get, you probably get emails all the time. You know, hire us for your SEO. It's cheap and we'll get, you'll get your rankings overnight. And it doesn't work that way. So just stay away from anything that seems way too good to be true. That's the life advice in general, but it works the same way with SEO. Any one that promises to increase your website traffic by 800% in seven days, probably not the good <laughs> the good tactic here. But uh, one of the things I that we do here at Pathfinder folks is so the content that we have for our business is researched and written by me. I, I go on Twitter and my read a posting barrier or someone else and that's that's in our industry and I will expand upon it. Now we mentioned AI. It use it as an aid. Do not use it to write your blog for you. I think Barry you would agree with me on that, right? 
Yeah. 100%. Yeah. It's an aid. You can, you can give you ideas, creative ideas on how to expand that content, but don't base everything off of it. No, exactly. Uh, we, so what I'm doing, I'll do the research and those that follow me for a while, a lot of you guys know Tech Tony cannot spell or use pronunci proper pronunciation to save his life. So he's not, I'm not a writer. So, you know, some of you business owners, sure, you can't afford to hire an admin or an SEO company. Go ahead and use ChatGPT or we use Gemini internally here to help us write the blogs, but don't write all of it. I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, man, 80% of the blog needs to be original content, I believe. Is that what it needs to be to rank properly on Google? Again, or... There's no real specific number. Again, it, you read it, make sure it makes sense. You're publishing. Even if somebody else writes it for you, Whoever, mm -hmm. wherever it's being published, that, per, that person who owns that website should read it and make sure it makes sense and they're proud of it. If not, they should adjust it like any editor would. So yeah, it has to go through it, the, the, your snu uh, snuff mark and to make sure everything works well with it. Yeah. Uh, another thing that helps business owners is uh, like, like blogs like, I mean, I'm sorry, blogs, podcasts like this, I normally turn into blogs so that you have the audio, the visuals, it's going to be up on YouTube and then you have, you can read it as well. Little tactics like that definitely help. But here's the thing, business owners. You guys have to remember, we both said this, it's not going to be an immediate win. You're, uh, have Google Analytics on your site. You, do you have, just like guys, do you use a lot of Google Analytics or Search Console? I, mean, I think I've seen you posting a lot lately about Search Console. I use Google Analytics, which is not as good. GA4 is, I wish I missed the old Universal Analytics 3. Really? Um, you do? Yeah, I think it's so much better. Anyway, it's just hiding. I, mean, I, I love hate relationship here. I mean, it was forced down everybody's throat. <laughs> right. So I use Google Search Console a lot too. I found this new tool called Wireboard.io for a new site to be able to track stuff in real time. It's really good. It's called Wireboard.io. It's kind of like in beta. I'm playing with that. I love it. It's like a dashboard I have on my screen full time now. Um, oh, nice. Google Search Console is your key when it comes to making sure Google can actually crawl your website. It gives you all these great reports on how what you're ranking for, what your rankings change, what keywords, what countries, Google Discover, Google News, all this stuff. It's a great tool. It's free. Definitely recommend it. Yeah. Um, sure. It's definitely a free tool. And that's what I tell business owners. You guys, as a business owner, like if you're a plumber, a lawyer, whatever it may be, yes, your job is to be that. But it does help to take, I tell my business owners, like, hey, take five, 10 minutes a, a week, something, just to look at your analytics and see what you're doing, whether you're putting... Uh, paid effort behind it or you're putting your own effort into uh, your website and building your blogs as well um something something that i don't quite understand fully yet and maybe you expand a little bit upon this very citation building um my version of building is making sure you're on google maps being maps and apple maps the top three dogs here what other advice would you have for citation for citation building? um yeah, so citations is like, for, you're specifically talking about local search, like Google business profiles. So yeah, I mean that a lot, a lot of... Oh, I'm, I'm open to anything, man. Like I said, I, I don't fully understand this industry. And like, I don't, we we have people that we talk to to help with our SEO, but then again, you know, I'm, I'm stubborn my way. I'm a PPC guy all day. Right. I, mean, I think in citation, when the people refer to citation, they usually refer to Google business profiles or local SEO. Um, mm -hmm. And citations could be about in those realm, like coming up for local types of, you know, um, being cited in a local website. So like the local business industry websites, the chamber of commerce in your area, um, maybe fundraisers you do. So things, little things you could do to get credit for doing stuff in your local community. Uh, maybe they'll link to you, maybe they won't. Um, but yeah, the other site, site you were talking about Apple maps and Bing map, Bing places. So this Apple business connect or something like that. That's where you get your Apple business, they Google business profiles. Favorites. Yeah, they are two weird names. Yeah, um, there's Bing Places, there's Yelp, there's all these different local search engines. You want to make sure your, your business is on all, all those. Uh, and then the citations are more about where you get linked to from local businesses and so forth. Again, you shouldn't spam those things. You shouldn't like pay for those. Um, just do it legit where you're helping the community. You get a little bit of recognition for doing that. Do you watching on YouTube? Yes, I am drinking Dunkin' Donuts. And no, they're not a sponsor of Tech Tony yet. Um, <laughs> oh <my God>. Soon, soon. <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be a hell of a sponsorship. 
But um, that is awesome, Barry. Um, who else do you uh, just like Gary? Even more uh, on you. Who else do you write? Who else do you write for? You write writing for search engine. Was it search engine journal or search engine land? So search engine roundtable is what I own, round table. and oh. search engine land is also where I write. People people confuse so many search engine roundtable, search engine land, search engine journal. There's a lot of them. I'm search engine land and search engine roundtable. And if people, well, before we go, before we we conclude the the, the podcast. Because they're you're giving people a lot here, and there's a lot to chew on here, guys. Like it's primarily you're going to need to put forth the effort. That's the biggest thing you need to understand here. Anyone promises you anything different. And I've talked to some pretty good SEO guys that have gotten their clients to rank maybe four to six months on a very aggressive SEO game plan, but the average is going to be about two years. You're going to need to put forth that effort if you want that free sweet organic traffic from google that's extremely relevant to your industry but for the business owner that's wanting to start this that's chewing on what we're giving them right now where what would you recommend for them to to start small just to make sure hey at least do this um so at least have a website that you could create content on um so that you could go ahead and like rank for those queries that people are like going to Google or even like AI search engines to find answers for you. If you don't have the ability to create the content and put it on your website, it could be video content. It could be text content. It could be images, it could be anything really, or podcasts like this. Um, you won't, have, if you don't have a way to distribute that, you won't be found. Uh, there's always word of mouth and that's fine. But outside of word of mouth, um, you won't be found online unless you produce, have a way to produce that content and put it on a platform like your website or on YouTube or on Spotify or whatever it be. So make sure you have a way of creating that content and distributing that content on your own website as well as on different platforms. My clients, uh, digital marketing is a two-way road. Sure, you're hiring me to solve a problem, which is run Google Ads in this sense. But if you don't give me what I need, all I'm going to be able to run is this basic search-based text ads, which everyone sees that, but I'm not going to be able to run uh, YouTube ads, display ads, or even uh, anything with images. And it's the same thing with your SEO guys. You got to put forth the effort. You're the business owner. You already know the questions people are going to ask you. Go ahead and just write that down, or try to remember right now, like same thing here, my Barry. Sometimes I'll see a good topic. I forget to write that thing down. I'm like, oh, what did that person say to that one? Right on. Uh, write it down and make a blog about it. Talk about it, make a video, put something on your website to help you so you show up online. Um, Barry, if people want to find you and follow you, or can people hire you? Um, only for, not for SEO, only for like web software. Um, web software. software. Well, if people want to find you, hire you, or follow you, where, where can they, besides uh, obviously Twitter, uh, where else are you at, man? So I'm everywhere at Rusty Brick across every single social platform except for TikTok. I don't do TikTok dances. I apologize. I know people want to see this body dance, but it doesn't do that. Um, uh. <laughs> but I'm, I'm everywhere at Rusty Brick. Also, RustyBrick.com. If you want to learn more about me specifically, RustyBrick.com slash Barry has all the information about me. Barry, it's been... Awesome to have you on here, man. I appreciate you taking the time to be on this podcast, man. I hope you, the small business owner, uh, learn something from this. And as always, like, share, and comment. It really does help the channel. It helps me keep this content free. Smash that like button. Appreciate it, Barry. Have a good day, man.